All right, welcome to another episode. So in this episode, what we're going to do is we're going to modify the context just a little bit because right now um, we're only saving the guild ID, but we also need to have uh, the other properties of the guild, such as the guild name, the guild icon. So I think it's just easier if we just update the context just a little bit. So I'm going to go inside the, uh, the Discord dashboard react project. So we're in the front end code right now and we're going to go into utils uh contexts guild context and you can see that right over here we have the guild id okay we actually don't even need to save the guild id or we this is not the only thing that we should save we should save the actual guild object itself now what exactly is the guild object that we want to save in the context well uh notice how notice how when we actually fetch all of the guilds from the endpoint it gives us an array of partial guilds and the context is only going to have one guild selected at most. So we'll basically save an in or not an instance, but a, uh, an, a type of partial guild. Okay. So let me go ahead and go inside guild context. So instead of saving the guild ID, we'll actually modify the guild context. So we'll go ahead and modify the guild ID. So instead of, uh, actually I'll just get rid of both of, uh, both of this. So we'll have it as guild and the type is going to be a partial guild we'll just reuse that type might as well and then for uh right down over here uh let's see we'll have this set to um i actually kind of want to make this i actually want this to be undefined because remember how this could actually this could technically be undefined because it will be undefined if the user never selects an item from the context. So we should actually make this uh, optional using the uh, the question mark operator. So this basically sets this to be either in, uh, either the, the value will be a partial guild or undefined. Okay, so we then need to uh, create a method to update the actual state of this context. So we'll do that by simply just setting up the update guild method so we'll do update guild that. And I think that's all we'll need to do for this context. We really don't need to set any default properties for guild, to be honest with you. Because all we need to do, if we ever need to reference the guild from the context, we can just check to see if guild is truthy. Okay. If we were to just set this to be a non-null value all the time, uh, you'll run into problems because let's say, for example, if the, well, first of all, we'll need to set like a default value for guild which means that we'll have to set the id the name icon owner etc etc and it just doesn't really make sense to set them all to be empty values because you're going to need to reference them in your application so it's just better to set guild to be a nullable value and then just check to see if guild is null or not and if it's null then that means it's likely that the user uh, needs to select an item from the guild so you just we can we'll, we'll, we'll handle that by redirecting the user back to the menu page. So if there's no guild selected, we'll redirect them back. And I'll show you how we're gonna do that. But now that we've updated the context here, we do need to update that right over here in the app.tsx file, because this is where we have our guild context provider. You can see that we no longer can pass in guild ID. It has to be a guild. And that's okay, because what we'll do is we'll just get rid of that and we'll get rid of this. Okay. And actually wait, whoops. So we'll get rid of guild id so let me just control z that so we'll get rid of guild id so we will need a state variable but it's not going to be guild id it's going to be just guild and set guild for the uh, setter and the uh, the state of this is just going to be well the state value is going to be a partial guild so we're going to have to get rid of the empty string and i'm going to type annotate this using the partial guild type okay and then all we'll do is when we go ahead and call update guild, it's going to need to take in a parameter that has a type part that is of type partial guild. And all we'll do is we'll just call set guild and just pass in guild over there. And then uh, let's see, and this should be called update guild instead. There we go. Now, the reason why we're still getting this linting issue is because we need to update something with the guild context. Yeah, right over here inside the update guild um, uh, property definition. Uh, inside the uh, the parentheses, we do need to define the variable type or the, the parameter type. So that should fix that. Okay, so we have 
our guild context all good to go. We have our app.tsx file all good to go. We just had to modify that real quick. So just, just to uh, give you a rundown. Oh, actually, let me see if I can do this. Uh, oh, wait, whoops. I also forgot. We, we do actually need to pass in guild, though. So let's do that. Okay. Guild could be uh, undefined, though. So we do need to check to see uh, wherever we need to reference the guild. We do need to check to see if the guild is uh, undefined or not. Okay. So like I said, this is literally just the same thing. Uh, the only difference is the, the same thing as when we were updating the guild ID. The only difference is we're now just updating the guild object instead of just updating the guild ID. And remember, every single time we're going to call update guild, um, it seems like we actually call it whenever we uh, select something from the menu. So let's go to the menu page right over here. And you can see we also have an error here too because now it's no longer update guild ID. It's just update guild, so let's change that. So this is inside the menu page, okay? So we need to change literally everything. So let's do that. So let's first we updated this uh, value or the variable that's given from the use context hook. We're then gonna go ahead and update the, the, the update guild call. And we need to obviously change this because we're not passing in a guild ID, we're passing in a partial guild object so let's fix that and then when we call handle click instead of passing guild id we're going to pass in guild and remember guild is a partial guild type this is an element that comes from the guilds array which is fetched from the api and we fetch that using the use fetch guilds which is a hook that we created so hopefully everything is making sense if it hadn't if it hadn't made sense until now hopefully the uh the repetitive explanation of everything is starting to you know starting to make sense but i think this is all we need to worry about right now let me see category page also uh yeah because we are getting guild id I'm not sure why there's not it's not giving me a red red line though or red issue like a red uh like a red error line but anyways that's okay all right so let's close the category page and what we need to do now is we need to go inside the navigation bar or app bar sorry app bar okay and we need to go ahead and inside this app bar remember the app bar is also wrapped inside the provider the guild context provider so we can call use context and we're going to pass in the guild context right over here okay remember this is the guild context that we created okay it's not the provider or the consumer it's just the guild context itself okay and we're going to go ahead and get the guild and one thing that's cool is that because this uh, app bar is wrapped inside the provider, uh, what we can do is we can actually check to see if guild is defined or not. So for example, first let me just console log guild real quick. If I go ahead and open up the logs right now, you're gonna see that uh, right over here, not this one, but this value over here, you can see that's coming from app bar .tsx on line eight. It's, it's undefined, okay? Which means that there's no context, okay? Now watch what happens if I go to the menu page, okay? Uh, and let's just say, for example, if I click on this server, you're gonna see that, uh, let me just do this and let me zoom out a little bit. You can see that now on line eight, it's actually logging a guild. And the reason why this is very important is because remember, if the guild is not selected, then the user should be redirected to the menu page. The reason why this is very important to understand is because um, this is going to this is going to prevent the user from being able to modify anything until they actually select a guild. In previous dashboard tutorials that I've made uh, over the past year or so, we actually had the guild ID in the route parameter. And that actually, I actually didn't realize, but it's actually not really good to do that because anyone can just paste in any guild ID and you'll be, and if you don't protect that, right, if you don't protect that page or if you don't like handle it by saying, oh, four, four not found, then anyone can access anything with any random guild ID. So you're not, so you'd have to basically add extra code to validate that. In this situation, we actually don't even need to worry about validating this because if you think about it, this menu page is only going to ever display guilds that the user's in, that they uh, that the bot is also in, right? And uh, that the user's also 
the, the user also has correct permissions as well. In, in this case, the admin permission. So they can only select these, uh, these guilds, which will only give us uh, the correct guild IDs or the correct guild objects. Okay, so when we use those guild, when we use the selected guild, it'll actually make an API call with the correct with the correct guild ID. So we don't have to worry about validating. We still should validate on the back end because you can never trust, uh, you can never really trust client side code, or you can never trust like you know requests made from the client. You always have to validate client and back end, but we'll do that later. Okay, but I just wanted to explain that real quick. So if I refresh right now, you're gonna see that it's gonna give us undefined. All right, so to actually redirect the user back to the menu page, if there's no guild selected, which is obviously gonna happen if they try to visit any of the routes directly. Like let's say for example, if they were to paste the route into the address bar like this without any guild selection, then yeah, the context will not have a guild selected, which means that they should not be able to update anything. So to redirect the, the user back to the menu, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and first, uh, let's see, I'm gonna do this actually. Uh, I can actually do this. So we can do return guild and so we're gonna use a ternary operator. So if guild is truthy, it's gonna render this app bar style. However, if it's not truthy, there's actually a component called navigate. And this is, I think a new, a new feature that's part of React Router version six. And we can actually use this to, uh, we can actually use this to navigate back to the menu. So in React Router version five, we were actually able to Use the there was a redirect component, but now they don't have that anymore. So it's now navigate. I think they actually removed it entirely. Okay, so watch this. If I refresh this page, you're gonna see because there's no guild, then that means that the menu uh, it'll, it'll navigate back us to the it'll navigate us back to the menu. But I can still click on any server I want. All right, so hopefully that makes sense, and hopefully that makes sense with the navigate. Uh, component all we're really doing is first we're specifying this replace attribute this prop which basically will re replace the history so if we were to go back it would land us back to the original page uh, and then we're going to go ahead and specify the route we want to push to which is just menu this could be any route but obviously menu makes the most sense okay the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and obviously get the correct uh, avatar and correct guild name and that's very easy since we already know guild is truthy at this point we can easily just reference guild dot name like that you can see it says configuring bmw server and you can add some custom styles if you want let's say if you want to add like a custom style to the guild name text like change it to a different color you could do that uh, let's go ahead and get the actual image now or the the icon so we created a function a couple of episodes ago called get icon url so all we're going to do is just call it get icon url and then we just pass in the guild and that will return us the actual icon and you can see that it is up there so if i click on the other let's say if i click on the other uh components or the, the if, if i click on these uh these text buttons that we created and it pushes us to the uh, the correct page Right, and even if I go to those pages, it will still give us uh, the uh, the same guild that we selected. And I'll, I want to show you how that works before I end this video. So if I go over to the guild prefix page, okay, and we're gonna go ahead and consume the context, okay. And so right now, uh, let me open up the logs. Okay, so right now, uh, let's restart this all again. So if I refresh, it should bring us back to the menu page, perfect. If I click on the first server, you can see that it shows the logs in the console. If I click on command prefix, it still shows the guild. Uh, and you can see that the guild, let me open that up again. You can see the guild is still in the context. So that's not gonna change because we, even though we are navigating using the React Router. Remember, when you use React Router and when you actually navigate using the React Router API, using the navigation API, it's not gonna update the actual state of context. It'll, it, obviously, if you, it's because because it's called client-side navigation and that's completely different than server-side navigation. We're not actually pasting the URL of the page in the address bar. Because if we did that, that would actually count as a new request to get the page 
and obviously that would give you an entire brand new uh, it would basically reset the state if you think about it all right so hopefully that makes sense and i think that's all we'll really need to worry about for now um i don't think we'll need to worry about the the guild being undefined because we are checking that inside app bar and remember app bar is in every single uh it's kind of like it's in every single it's wrapping all of our pages except for the login page and the menu page so we don't really have to worry about uh checking the uh, checking if guild is truthy or not but we still will do that though just because we define it to be truthy or undefined so we do have to check that in check that in the other uh, pages okay but uh, obviously we'll, we'll do the same thing in category page as well where well actually we already did that already well actually not category page sorry uh welcome message page where we will consume the context get the guild and then we'll and then when we make an api call um we'll have the guild id and we can send we can send the information to the the api and then we'll know which guild id to update for the correct guild configuration so hopefully all this made sense. In the next episode, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and finally be able to fetch the guild configuration from the database, from the API. So we'll have to create a route to do that on the API. And then uh, after, after that episode, we'll actually go ahead and update the actual prefix. Okay, so I will see you all in the next episode. Peace out.